up, everybody? Rasati out here in Singapore. Thank you so much for coming back. This is the Night Owl podcast, and I wanted to jump back on today because I got some things I want to talk about, obviously. So you know me. I usually scroll through social media first thing in the morning. It's about 8 o'clock on Thursday here in Singapore. And um, just drop baby girl at school, start my little morning routine, and wanted to kind of get a feel for what's going on in the world, what are people talking about. And I saw this quote, and I was like, yo, I definitely shared the quote. I tagged the person who originally created it and everything, but then I was like, you know, I need to explain this because this is a really, really important concept. It's something that I've been doing for the last 10, 15 years, literally. So the quote basically says that stop waiting for your ship to come in. It may be that you need to build that ship. And it hit me because that's what I've been doing. A lot of times I find that there's a gap in the system. Maybe there isn't a solution for what I need and I have to figure it out for myself. I need to make the create uh, create the solution that I need in life. Um, there was a section of my life where I was working for Lumber Liquidators. I loved the job. I started off as a temp and they hired me on full time after four months because I proved that I was, I don't know, I was kind of decent with data entry it was data entry come on anyway so i proved myself they hired me on and i became the senior data analyst for the samples department at lumber liquidators this was based out in Toronto, virginia i used to have to drive an hour to work every morning and um i was i was killing it i was doing it you know i'm kind of a workaholic so once i have a project in mind i'm not going to let it go that easy i want to do as much as i possibly humanly can and i found myself working about 80 hours a week now around that time um i had recently just gotten married and I, I got pregnant. So what ended up happening was because I was a temp, because it was a considered a pre-existing condition when they hired me on full time, I did not qualify for maternity leave. But I didn't think about all that at the time, you know, when I first figured it out, but when, once I f- first found out that I was pregnant. So I just let my, you know, supervisor know um, so that they are aware they can, you know, help me maintain my safety and my sanity because I was Look, I couldn't complain. I was so happy with the way I was dressing. I was in like sweatpants and a sweatshirt because it's cold inside the warehouse, but it's samples department, which means that they're cutting wood all the time. So I needed to have a mask on and I got to wear steel toe boots. So, I mean, hey, I was comfortable, right? But the other thing is I need to be very careful around the machinery. I need to make make sure that people are being safe around me as well. And it was just, you know, a lot to take in. So I made sure that my supervisor know, hey, I'm pregnant. Um, I'm happy to do the work. I'm still going to put in 110% like I always do. And um, we just, when the time comes, we'll figure out what we can possibly do about this maternity leave situation because I was not qualified. So when the time came, and it was kind of sudden because baby girl came two weeks earlier than expected. Um, I happened to finish work on a Friday, went into labor on Saturday morning, had her on Sunday morning, like early, early morning, cause I was in labor for about for 13 hours. And then I was discharged on the Monday, which meant technically I was supposed to report back to work. So, I mean, they were very kind and generous and I was able to check my emails and shit from home because I had been doing that anyway. Uh, working 80 hours a week means half of it. You work at the office and the other half you work at home because lumber liquidators is a 24 hour business it does not sleep warehouse is always open there's a different shift every day and so i was able to get a lot of the work done actually i preferred working at night because no one else was there to stop me with meetings and stuff anyway i digress come to find out that there really wasn't a really big solution but i can't go into work with a newborn baby and i can't leave her at home with anybody i kind of need to bond with the kid you know what i mean so my mom came home for about two two months and we settled everything and i was lucky enough in between you know, feedings and stuff that I work, I worked around the clock. It was so bad that I actually moved downstairs because my husband could not sleep. He was complaining that he couldn't sleep. He didn't get a chance to rest or anything. So here I am. I moved downstairs. I made my office out of the kitchen table. I slept in the living room and, um, you know, I shuttled between the living room and the kitchen. Basically, that's that's all I really needed. Um, So when the baby slept, they say that you should sleep too because you need the rest. I didn't. I was working. I wanted to make sure that they had no reason to fire me. I needed the money. I needed the benefits. You know what I mean? Anyway, eventually, they got tired of the situation where I was working from home. They, I guess other people began to complain. Like, how come she doesn't have to come? The work is getting done. It's not like I was, like, slacking on the work or anything, but they favoritism and all that stuff started coming up. So I had to create a solution that worked for everyone involved. 
Um, and so that I could actually be with my baby because something funny happens, right? Once you start bonding with the baby, there's no way that you're going to leave it with just anybody if you really bonded with the baby. Uh, some people do have postpartum. Some people do have difficulties bonding with their kids. Maybe it's over breastfeeding issue. Maybe it's over, you know, just understanding the depression that comes along with suddenly like the attention really isn't on you anymore. It's on the baby. Like all that stuff comes into play and that's part of how people deal, right? But I did not want anyone else to hold the baby. I did not want to leave it with anyone else. I was, I was being selfish and I was happy about it. But the point was they were starting to call me into work and they were like, nope, we need you here. We need you for meetings. We need you to do because if I'm the senior data analyst, that means I see every piece of data that comes through about how many samples I was doing the, uh, the, the planning, the shipping, the logistics, the purchasing. I was doing all of that for the samples department because no one else knew the data like I knew it. So, they said I needed to be there for, for morning meetings. The morning meeting was at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking, okay, how the hell do I do this? Because 8 o'clock in the morning, you know, kids are getting ready to go to school and stuff. Like, I need to make sure that everyone's settled. They have to be in school school by um, 9. They have to, you know, they have to make sure that they're getting to where they need to be. Like, we can't afford to have all these things pop up and then I'm not where I need to be and the kids are getting, you know, I can't push it all off on my husband either. Now, the good news is my husband didn't have to go into work until 10 o'clock every morning, which means with the commute, if I leave the office by 8.45, I can get home by 9.45, he can get out the door, no problems, no problems. So I had to figure out, well, how the hell do I do this 8 o'clock meeting and then leave on time and still get home in time for me to be able to do all the other work? So I made a compromise. I was like, you know what, you want me to be here for the meetings, but it's not like there are any meetings after 8 It's the morning meetings and morning briefings so that the next shift can get on their way and know what they're they're supposed to do. But I still have a ton of work that I need to compile and put together and reports that I need to, you know, sort out. And I can do that from home. But if you really need me for this meeting, let me let me give you this solution that I came up with. It kind of just dawned on me one day. I was like, well, shit, you need me there for eight hours a day. Lumber Liquidators is a 24 hour day business. The specific piece of the day that you need me there for is eight o'clock in the morning. So what says that I can't come in at one in the morning and work until about nine o'clock in the morning and then leave and go home? I've spent the eight hours. I'm there for the meeting. I get the work done. It's quiet because no one's going to disturb me. I can really get the work done and I can go home. Reluctantly, they agreed. I had to create the solution for me so that all parties were happy. Because the only solution they saw was that I had, to just, I had to put my kid in daycare and I had to come to work and do what everyone else was doing. I'm not going to do what everyone else is doing. It's, not just, it's just not who I am. Uh, second example. Came back to Singapore and, I mean, I was under the impression that, you know, grandparents, family, everyone kind of pitches in and we raise our families together. It's like a village thing, right? It's not like that. Especially when you've been gone for about 35 years. They don't believe those things. And that's cool. Like, everybody has their own way of doing things. But the predominant habit here in Singapore is to have a maid, somebody to live in the house with you and do all the housework for you. But here I was thinking, well, hold up. I, I gotta pay someone to live in my house and then have them do all the work that I should be doing while baby girl is watching the fact that, you know, she sees me come home from work or whatever. And then I do what, just be lazy and sit around until she has to go to bed. I can't do that. I'm one of those people that like, I I work, I do things. Uh, back in the States, I had a family of five and somehow we figured out how to get all the housework done the cleaning done and go to work and pick them up and like I mean it worked I didn't need a maid back then how come I need a maid now so I had to fight that idea because I didn't want to waste 500 bucks a month and it's not just 500 bucks because I've got to pay a levy on top of that right so I'm not paying that amount of money out of my paycheck every month where it could be going somewhere else instead Plus, we had a really bad situation where the maid, I had, I tried it for a while. I'm not going to say I didn't try it. I tried it for a while because I was forced to try it. And um, eventually what happened was the maid was waiting for me to do the work. Because she was getting to the end of her contract and she was just not paying attention anymore. And it was difficult for me to see that. So ultimately, I got rid of her because of baby girl safety is of the utmost importance. And I realized, hey, if baby girl's in school and I'm at work, why does it need to be in someone living in my house? There's no damn reason, right? So then I was thinking, okay, well, I don't need anyone in the house. How difficult would it be for me to clean the house and to cook and to make sure that baby girl is taken care of at school? And it just so happened that it hit me. Hey, I've done it before. I can do it again. It's not that difficult. And it's actually a little more economical because then I'm teaching baby girl what it means to run a house because she learns by watching, right? She is going to follow my example and not follow my words. 
So if I can't tell her that I raised her and show her that I'm raising her and help her learn what all skills she needs inside the house, who is going to do that for her? Right? So eventually what I created was a situation where, yes, I go to work and I come back. I rush back home to pick her from daycare. She had to be in daycare. There's the only extra fee that I was paying was daycare. Uh, because in Singapore, they decide that, you know, if you have a child, it's none of their concern. You should have a maid or someone in place that can take care of your kids so that you can work as many hours as they deem fit, but you're not going to get overtime or nothing. So it's strange that way. They'll come around eventually. HR will pick up their slack and figure out that, you know, human relations is really important. But until then, I had to figure out my own way. It wasn't until I was put in several situations where I was literally running from the bus stop to get to my kid before they shut down the daycare. And I was freaking out. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to live under this kind of pressure no more. I love my job. I love having a steady paycheck, but I'm not living with this kind of, but this is a lot of pressure for me. I can't do it. So eventually I had to build another ship. Eventually I decided to quit my job and create the kind of life that I think would be best for me and my kid while fulfilling all of the basic needs that she needs and I need. And from there, my life took on a completely different shape. Suddenly, I was running my own business. It wasn't like I I jumped out of the blue and decided I'm going to quit my job and I have nothing to do. Uh, I'm just going to make money somehow. No, I've been doing this from home, part-time, in between all of my work. I've been teaching. I've been curating. I've been learning. I've been putting in effort trying to figure out what else is there that I can be doing that could make my home life a lot easier, my mental state a lot easier. And it was in that search that I found that a lot of people are looking for the same answers. So I started to build a ship. I did it part-time at first. And then eventually I was like, you know what? This is ready to take a life of its own. Let me, let me go full-time with this. But even then I had to figure out, well, how do I do this? Let me explain something to you. The school system in Singapore is great, but the school hours are a little bit crazy. Baby girl needs to be in school by 725. She gets out of school by 145. Now you tell me what office in any country in the world is going to let you go home at 145 to pick up your kid? Nobody. Now for a while, I had a job that allowed me to go home at lunchtime, pick her up and bring her back because it was a student care facility. So she was just going to sit in the corner and do like, you know, home homework anyway. It was fine. But no one else is going to give you that freedom. No one else is going to be like, oh, yeah, go on your lunch break and go pick up your kid and bring him back to the office because we're cool like that. No, it's not going to work that way. So I had to first wrap my head around the fact that suddenly she's home halfway through the day because I had I'd taken her out of daycare as well. I never saw the kid. I maybe saw her for an hour and a half every night. And then she was off to school again. The next one, like, what kind of life is that? I don't want that. So, yeah. Building my own business meant that I had to reorganize my time. I had to really look at where my time was going, what pockets of time I had to be able to use as office work, and how I was going to make this work. She goes to school at 7.30. She gets out at, let's say, 1.30, right? 7.12 is five hours, and another hour after that, that's six hours. Six solid hours that I could be working, which means drop her off at school, come back home, with my drink and my two-step, I got my coffee in my hands and I just open up my laptop and start working. How difficult is that? It's not difficult at all. And whether I have clients or not, I can be creating, I can be, you know, doing research, I can be writing, I can be doing all kinds of stuff. Six hours is a long time if it's uninterrupted. And I mean, if you have your breakfast first, by the time lunch rolls around and you go pick up the kid, you can have lunch six hours solid, no breaks. So I created my own office hours. So yeah, six hours straight, I work. And then in the evenings when she goes to bed, I still have a couple, of, a couple more hours that I can deal with time zones and stuff and still help people, still serve people. I couldn't have been more proud, but you know what? It took a little bit of, you know, ingenuity. It took a little bit of open-mindedness. And yeah, I had to build a ship. Every step along the way, I've had to build the solution that I wanted. I didn't have the kind of job that could give me the freedom to be with my kid. I had to create it. I didn't have the kind of work hours that meant that I could really serve the community. I had to create it. I didn't have the kind of business niche that helped me to be able to really make a difference in the world. I had to create it. I had to dig deep. I had to do a lot of soul searching, but I created it. Every step of the way, I'm the shipbuilder here. Master shipbuilder. 
because I'm not about to sit around and wait for someone else to create my solutions. Something I realized when this, you know, this whole mindset, motivation, mental health path that I'm on. If my problems can only be solved by other people, I will forever be depressed and anxious. Oh, it's this person's fault that I feel like this and that person's fault that this is happening to me. And I can't believe that the world is just treating me this way. If it's everyone else's fault for the way my life is, it means I have no control. I'm at the mercy of everything outside of me before I can actually find happiness. Fuck that. Not with that. Shut all that noise down. If they're not going to help, I need to build it for myself. If they're not going to teach me, I need to learn it for myself. If they're going to say no every time I need something, I need to learn how to be self-sufficient so that I don't need to ask anyone else. Yeah, sure. Ask people for help. Put yourself out there. Learn from other people. That's great. But not everyone is going to say yes. So for the no's out there, I thank you because it made me resilient and self-sufficient and independent to like an arrogant end. But because of that, I found a way to make my solutions. I will never again be at the mercy of the world. I will wake up every morning and happen to it on purpose. So for all of you out there who are trying to figure out, well, how do I do this? How do I do this? What do I do next? I don't understand. Why is this happening to me? I want you to stand tall in front of your mirror and you look at yourself and you say, you know what? I can figure this out. There is a solution. I just haven't figured it out yet. I don't see it yet. Get a different perspective. I really love that scene in um, Big Hero 6 where the older brother is holding the younger brother. And he's like, you know, use that big brain of yours and get a different perspective. And he kind of hung him upside down and swung him around a little bit just to be silly and to, and to look at it from a different angle. And suddenly he had a new idea. A lot of times when I can't see the solution, where I'm struggling, I'm really, really just frustrated and angry and I... I'm just at a loss. What I find is I need to step away from that situation altogether and do something completely different. And eventually, the solution will present itself. I will always be the answer to my problems. Always. I will always be the one to generate whatever it is that I need to generate in order to get the result that I want. Now, last night I was talking about making as many mistakes as possible. Make them all. Make all the mistakes because from the mistakes you learn what works and what doesn't work and what aspects of it works and doesn't work. When you're working with computer programs, a lot of times when you run a program or if you create, um, I don't know, uh, a sequence or even if you, you test data and you're trying to run the reports, you're trying to pull the data for the report, something will glitch somewhere, something will happen and you don't get the stuff that you need. But it's in those places that you learn to make it stronger. It's in those error messages. It's in those, you know, default settings that you know you can't get by because you can't remember what you created it from like way back in the beginning because the data has evolved the the use for the information has evolved it's in those places that you make things stronger um, I think I talked about working at the Grand Hyatt for a while and using the operating system I think I made every possible mistake with booking and blocking rooms um, I screwed up a lot but it's because I screwed up a lot that I was able to teach the way that I did for any new employee because I knew exactly the kind of mistakes you were going to make and I was going to tell you exactly why you shouldn't. I'm not going to just say don't do this. I'm going to tell you why. Because I've been there. I've gone through it. So making mistakes and being a master shipbuilder, those are my two big, big takeaways from last year. I will forever be the answer to all of my problems. All those answers have to come from me. They're my problems. And I will forever keep trying new things in order for me to better understand the world around me, better understand the people around me, better understand what they're doing to cope in whatever way they can. Because if I'm going to be the order that I think that I will be, if I'm going to move the masses and really help people to be more peaceful in this world, I need to know all of that. So I hope this makes sense, you guys. Go ahead and think about building the ship that you need to come in to save you. Because I guarantee you, only you can find a solution that works for you. People are going to miss pieces if you get it from outside. you got to figure this out. You can. you just got to keep an open mind. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. But in the meantime, y'all have a blessed day and I'll catch you again soon.